All right, well, thank you for that introduction. My name is Mark Thomas. I head up marketing. And I'm here today to talk about car sharing and ride sharing using two services for one fleet and other ways to increase utilization rates on basically how to run a profitable car sharing business. I wanted to start off, though, by taking a look at some analyst statistics on how mobility services are the next automotive growth engine. And these things really pointed out to me the importance of understanding how to get into connected car, uh, car sharing and ride sharing businesses. If we look at the projected market caps, we see today that it's about a trillion dollars for the automotive industry. That's the gray bar. Well, in 2030, those businesses that represent vehicle sales will be growing. It will be about 1.4 trillion. But it's the green bars that are really exciting. These are the autonomous mobility as a service businesses. And their market caps are expected to grow to about 9 trillion by 2030. So you can see that this is where the excitement and the growth is, and it's the things, the work that will be taking place now that will decide who those winners are. Another way to look at it, who are these car companies going to be selling vehicles to? Uh, this is from Deloitte, and their projections are in the United States and urban areas, that somewhere between 2025 and 2030, there'll be more vehicles sold into mobility as a service providers than vehicles sold to private customers. So the landscape of who's going to be buying cars will be changing. And finally, I think looking at some of the uh, reasons for these market caps, the projected revenues for the growth of mobility as a service are expected to grow up to $1 trillion by 2030. This is uh, from an ABI research report out last year, mobility as a service. Great reading for, for people. So I want to focus on how do you capitalize and be ready today for this mobility opportunity tomorrow. And an important way to look at this is to see where we've come from to understand where we're going. Now, economic models have been from traditional ownership to the shared economy and then the service economy. These have been big changes in the industry. And for mobility as a service and vehicles in particular, it's kind of followed a similar path from private vehicle ownership that we've all been accustomed to, to about 10, 12 years ago, the car sharing revolution hitting the scene. And then five, six years ago, ride sharing really started to take off. So I think the conventional wisdom is there's a progression when we, when we add autonomous into the mix that it's just going to become the next big thing. And you're essentially going to have to have gone through these stages to get to a place where you can offer an autonomous ride-sharing service. But if you think about what the bottom axis here has in common, all of these vehicles have a driver. For your own car, you're driving it. For car sharing, you're driving it. And with ride-sharing, there's a driver in your car. As a passenger, you still have a driver. For self-driving cars, this autonomous mobility as a service Car sharing and ride sharing start to blend together. And in fact, they are both valid entry points to become and enter this market space of autonomous mobility and service. And in fact, our belief is that given today's market environment, the best route to autonomous actually goes through car sharing. Let's take a look. With ride sharing, one of the key skills that the ride sharing service providers have today is recruiting and managing their driver pool. That's going to go away as a key strategic benefit in this autonomous world. Instead, the car sharing companies typically own their own fleets, and they have to understand how to purchase the fleet, how to wash the fleet, maintain the fleet sell the fleet when they're done. So there's an entire element of ownership and management that the ride sharing guys just tell the drivers, you take care of that. Not to belittle this ride sharing entrance point, they have a huge customer base and customers are used to thinking about the idea that you press a button to get to a place uh, and the ride sharing company comes and gets you. 
and the car sharing guys are gonna have to build harder. With the advent of one-way car sharing, or as we call free-floating car sharing, that allows you to reserve a car, uh, pick it up, and then park it anywhere in the service zone, uh, this one-way model is certainly a step towards making it more convenient than the typical station-based model. But in the future, transportation as a service, uh, we can look at what other indus industries have done in their end state. For instance, let's take a look at the airline industry. They're not running as a monopoly. There are a number of different brands. Each brand doesn't try and operate out of every city to every city. They form alliances. They understand and have differences. There's value price brands, there's luxury brands. And these guys, to effectively offer a complete service, have had to develop an alliance model. So that if you take and want to fly United from here to Berlin, you'll probably be on a United plane to Frankfurt and then a Lufthansa plane for that last leg. But your purchase goes through United, your tickets United, everything's United. <clears throat> In the car sharing world, companies will either have to try and staff up and build cars that meet the entire demand of a city so they can have appropriate service levels, or they can collaborate with one another. And if their car is further away, they can reference a car that's much closer. And really the focus on this is to, if you're going to enter the car sharing market, then you need to enter the market with a platform that's designed for high utilization. In our experience, there's a break-even utilization rate for running uh, mobility as a service car sharing at about 12%. So you can see if you can get up to 15%, 4,000 car fleet, that's four cities with 1,000 cars, or if it's European cities, maybe it's eight cities, at 500 each, this business can make about $160 million a year. If you can get up to 30% utilization, it's a third of a billion dollar business, and a lot more profit, uh, because it's that extra utilization that leads to the profit. So how do you go from lower utilization rates to higher utilization rates. Well, there's, there's four key methods to achieving that. The first is you need to employ machine learning. The ability to understand where the demand is. If one of the cars that you have in this free-floating model is parked on the edge of the service area, and you can predict that it won't be used for the next 48 hours, well, you could do a couple of things. You could offer that car for sale. 50% off if you agree when you finish driving to drop it off in the central location area. Uh, if nobody takes the offer, then you can send out the fleet conditioning people that will physically move the car from the edge into an area where it's going to be much more likely to be rented. So one of the first ways to make sure that your cars get used is to put them in places where people want them. Second is around operational efficiency. If you have the ability to understand how each and every car is used, you can plug in predictive fleet management. The last thing you want is the check engine light going off when your customer is using the car. So the ability to know for this car, given it's driving past, it needs to be serviced, you can take it out of service at very low utilization times, like the middle of the night, and have it worked on. So that when it's back in service, when the thing is actually demanded. The third is about multiple services, and this is really where you get uh, a lot of benefit, is if you can take one fleet of cars that you're using for car sharing and actually use them for a different kind of service, like ride sharing. The peak demand utilization for car sharing is in the middle of the day. Ride sharing, people like to commute in it, so there's a spike in the morning, and then in the evenings when people are going out to restaurants, stuff on a park, or maybe they're gonna have some drinks, so the demand curves are actually quite different. If you can take advantage of the fact that your cars are in demand for car sharing in the day and then put them into service for ride sharing, either offering them to people who drive or Uber or Lyft, or set up your own ride sharing service that's a differentiator. Being able to use it and offer your car on the weekends uh, for one rate for tourists that may want it for 48 hours and don't want to have to you know, take the shuttle bus to the airport and all those things, but have a car that's located, you know, free floating around their hotels in the city. There's a lot of different ways to get those cars working for you more than just putting them into a car sharing. 
And then finally, we talked about cross-network, having the ability for your fleet to collaborate with a different fleet so that if somebody has a car that's much closer, you can save the customer the, the, the 10 block walk and refer them to a car that's just around the corner getting uh, at a, at a marketing fee for doing that, while at the same time giving the customer better service because they didn't have to walk very far, they had a car that was close to you. When we talk about multi-service, that's one of the key areas. These car sharing services have been around for a long time, and they've mostly been station-based. Uh, moving to a free-floating model definitely increases in utilization rates, but we are finding that, that fleets that are used for a single service, like car sharing, top at about 15%. And if you're able to then use these fleets for more than one purpose, you can get into a 30%, and you can not only take the break even down from two and a half years, you can get it uh, to about one and a half years. In fact, some of our customers are experiencing things close to one year. So their uh, dramatic increases in utilization really help uh, running, running these services profitably. I'm with a company called RightSell. RightSell makes the leading intelligent platform for new mobility services, enabling services like ride sharing, car sharing, and even autonomous ride services. <clears throat> we were founded in 2009 in the mission of providing new mobility services. Uh, we're the only mobility platform that lets you operate both a car sharing and a ride sharing service using the same fleet. Uh, we're based in Silicon Valley, San Francisco, actually. And we previously understand this market because we operated a service called Summon that was a competitor to Lyft and Uber and had uh, 2,500 drivers. Uh, actually, the fact of creating a fully hardened ride-sharing platform is quite difficult. Uh, we've had many years of experience that will help bring to our customers. In fact, BMW's reach now runs on RideSell. This is the industry's first multi-service offering. They are the North American uh, car sharing, ride sharing, residential car sharing, and rental service that's being live now in Seattle, Portland, and Brooklyn. They were able to launch three cities in nine months using our platform. They've got over 50,000 members and are experiencing very strong fleet utilization. If you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, the gig car share runs on ride cell. <laughs> This is a free-floating car sharing service that's being launched by AAA of Northern California. Uh, it's serving the Oakland and Berkeley, California regions, and it's not in San Francisco. Uh, one of the relevant uh, facts from the last panel is it's really important that the cities support this kind of operations. Berkeley and Oakland have allowed for a free-floating parking pass that lets the cars park anywhere in the city, even metered spots, so long as the meter is two hours or longer. So this lets cars go from one spot to another. It's really convenient for people. They can use it to run errands, park for free, put their things in the trunk. When they're finished, they can just leave the car wherever they are. They also are a unique fleet of Toyota Prius vehicles because they have bike racks. Every single vehicle has a bike rack, and it's actually spawned a huge amount of multimodal transportation. They have dedicated spots at things like the BART, which is our local subway, and other transit spots, so that people put their bike on the car, take it into public transit, the public transit takes the bikes, and then when they get there at the other end, they can ride their bike uh, the last way to the office, for instance. So people really enjoyed the idea that there is uh, bike racks on these cars facilitating more flexible kinds of transportation. And then, just today, we announced that the Volkswagen Group in Poland is using RideSell for their Skoda vehicles. Now, this is an interesting model because it's the dealership group in Poland that's taking advantage of the fact that they have people that want to take their cars on test rides. So now somebody can download the app, take a picture of their driver's license, take a picture of themselves, and a picture of their credit card, and just walk into the dealership, unlock a car using their phones, take it out for a ride. You don't have to go in and see the sales guy in order to experience the car. And you can rent it for longer than just the typical 15 minute ride where they're staring at you. You can actually use it for the entire day. So this is a, a station-based car sharing service that's out of a dealership. 
you think about it, the dealerships are in a great position, and they're an incredibly risky position. They're in a great position because they have service, so they could, if they wanted to open and run their own mobility as a service, car sharing, they have used cars that are sitting there. They could turn those cars into something that makes money for them. They could service them with their service group. On the other hand, if you think about it, these are groups that have to adopt mobility as a service. If people stop purchasing vehicles on their own, there's a risk that the auto dealership becomes the next blockbuster video. If we're all used to getting our, our mobility on demand, there's no need to go into the blockbuster and buy the DVD or go into the dealership and get your own car serviced because you may not own a car. So this is an important initiative by Volkswagen, uh, really testing out the dealerships as a mode of getting into the car sharing business. We make a single platform for multiple mobility services. So this includes an app. The app lets you reserve a car, lets you rent a car, it lets you request a ride, all from the same app. And this gives our customers, like the Indefinite Reach Now service, the ability to offer a premium ride sharing service. So they're competing uh, in Seattle with Uber. They've realized that some people might like to have a, a BMW only fleet of vehicles. Their drivers have a very high level of service with you know, white gloves and will open the door for you. So they're discovering that there's a, a niche opportunity for them to offer and use their cars for more than just this car sharing service. For us to be able to do this, it's more than just creating an app. We are an end-to-end -end business operation solution. And the things that we do, like onboarding, that secret sauce that allows us to take a picture of your driver's license and your credit card and provision you, takes about two minutes. We've received a lot of compliments on that functionality because some of the other uh, folks, you have to fill out a form online and then you wait to get verified and they send you something in the mail. In this world, people don't want to wait. They want to be able to download the app and start using it right away. So we've got the backend infrastructure that helps you onboard almost immediately. The demand supply optimization, machine uh, learning, that's all part of our backend platform. The ability to understand the hotspots and the utilization areas and move the cars. We integrate with the fleet management providers. So these are the people that actually Go to the cars and uh, we, we detect that the battery level is lower. We'll send somebody out, we'll send a, an API call into a fleet management group's uh, service that tells them, hey, this car is taken out of service, can you please move it to a charging station? Or this car is almost out of gas, or this car is reported dirty, um, this car needs maintenance. There's a lot of work that goes into actually sending people out to these cars to keep them running well. Keep and having a, the ability to understand and coordinate efforts with the local fleet management people is an important part of our operations platform. Dispatching, if you're doing car sharing and ride sharing, we do actually car pooling too for a number of universities that have safe ride. And so we've got a lot of experience in understanding optimized routes, telling people, hey, if you cross the street, you'll save that guy from having to make a U-turn to come get you, and then another U-turn to keep going. Oh, and you have your bike with you? Well, don't worry, we've got you in a shuttle that has a bike rack for you. So all the understanding, it's a huge amount of complexity to understand how to dispatch and tell the drivers where to go. Uh, we'll also do things like take the payments processing for you uh, and provide world-class customer support. Really, our objective is to help you understand that the time to act is now. Don't wait, embrace experiment and embrace partnerships. We are RideSell and we make the intelligent platform for new mobility services.